Votre attention, le soleil est sur le point de se coucher. Tous les citoyens sont priés de se mettre à la vie en intérieur jusqu'à l'eau. Attention, the sun is currently setting. All citizens are required to shelter the storm. Turn that shit up. Relax, man. I don't bite. Lock up tight now. Night's just getting started. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel dropped a brand new Blade trailer, so we'll break it all down. I know there's a bunch of questions about what's going on with the new Blade movie with Mahershal Ali. Is Wesley Snipes going to come back as a version of Blade in a cameo scene in Deadpool 3 or Avengers 6 Secret Wars? So we'll break it all down. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up hill. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Of course, I'll do more videos when we get more footage for the actual movie, when we start learning more about what's actually going on with the plot and how Blade is going to fit into the new MCU. We have a couple of details already, but we don't know everything yet. They made this trailer announcement on Blade's 50th anniversary too. It's the year of his debut, not the exact date. Blade's first appearance in the comics was in Marvel's Tomb of Dracula back in April 1973. So it was a little while before this actually dropped. But because he debuted in the Dracula comic book, that's why a lot of people thought in the original version of this new Blade movie Marvel's working on would feature Black Knight and Blade, maybe Moon Knight, teaming up to fight a version of Dracula in the MCU. Like everybody remembers all the Moon Knight Dracula memes. That was all part of the early hype around Marvel finally doing a Sons of Midnight style darker team up when they made the initial announcement back at Comic-Con 2019. It has been 84 years, like think about how long it's been, post all the memes since they announced that they were going to be making a Blade movie. Pretty much everybody was like, give me the MCU Defenders, but darker characters, and that is basically the Sons of Midnight. They literally just did a Marvel game based on that whole concept. It sounds like the game that they're making for Blade, they plan to come out alongside the new Blade movie just to take advantage of the synergy. They do that all the time with the big video games and the big Marvel movies. Sometimes, like the past few years, there have been a bunch of big delays, so they wind up messing up the timing of the release of the games and the movies, and it doesn't quite work out. But for example, this is part of the reason why they're making a new Wolverine game, because Wolverine is coming back in a really big way the next couple years through Hugh Jackman's character in Deadpool 3, then a couple years after that in Secret Wars. So between Deadpool 3 and probably 2027, when Secret Wars is actually going to come out, they have a few years to finish that Wolverine game. It's basically the same idea with this new Blade game. Just starting at the beginning of the trailer, there's a couple Easter eggs in here that you probably spotted. It starts with him at what looks like his regular barbershop he's been visiting in Paris, France. It just looks like an ally of his here is cutting his hair in the middle of the day because he is known as the Day Walker. Notice the large cross and some of the other religious markings around the door to help protect it against vampires. Inside the Marvel Universe, just generally, vampires are weak against true religious artifacts like crosses, holy water, they hate garlic, they operate more like traditional vampires you've seen in movies, TV shows, stories. Basically what you saw in all the Wesley Snipes Blade movies. When the camera slowly moves into the barbershop, you can see day transitioning to night as the public announcer in the city broadcasts a shelter-in-place warning to all the regular humans, warning them to lock themselves inside for their own safety. They're in the middle of a vampire epidemic, so apparently like the public in general knows that there are vampires that exist. In the original Marvel stories, and they kind of get into this during the Wesley Snipes Blade movies, regular people don't know that vampires exist. Like regular citizens go about their days, their normal lives, without really knowing much about the supernatural, just in general. Not just vampires, but like all things Doctor Strange, magic, monsters like the ones from Werewolf by Night, everything connected to that world, essentially. 
They kind of got into this during the recent Werewolf by Night movie that they aired on Disney+, Plus, explaining how their secret monster hunting society led by Ulysses Bloodstone in the Bloodstone family was largely a secretive endeavor that the normal world didn't understand or know about inside the MCU. If it wasn't clear, Werewolf by Night took place in present day relatively, like after the events of Avengers Endgame. So the idea is that most of the world doesn't really know about what's going on with the supernatural side, like the supernatural creatures in general. Probably the best example of that in like the recent Marvel characters to pop up are Kamala Khan, for instance, Miss Marvel, who's a super big Avengers fangirl, has all their paraphernalia all over her room. She, like most of the regular world, knows all about the final battle of Avengers Endgame. They know who Thanos is, they know the Shatari. But for example, Miss Marvel does not know that Man Thing exists or that Werewolf by Night exists. She also probably doesn't know that Blade exists or vampires, but because vampires would be like a pop culture thing, like there would have been movies about vampires in the MCU, she would have grown up watching. She probably understands the concept of vampires, and because she knows magic is real, all the supernatural stuff is real. She knows that Doctor Strange exists. She probably has some fan fiction that she's written because that's her whole thing. She writes fan fiction about the Avengers. Like she probably wrote stories about vampires, other supernatural creatures, or at least has some theories that they might exist. Like, oh, wait a minute. If magic is real, does that mean that vampires are also real too? But she's never actually seen a vampire werewolf by night or any supernatural creatures like that yet. During the trailer inside the barber shop, you can see Blade getting his hair cut. His hair does grow still, for those people that wonder. Like, notice all the crosses, the religious artifacts all over the room. Like, wall-to-wall -wall crosses and other artifacts meant to protect the barber. When the barber turns up the music on his iPad, notice all the headlines in French. The first one reads, Takeover of a popular social network by SI. I don't know who that is. Probably just some character in the context of the game or some corporation in the context of the game. Maybe one that's owned by vampires, like maybe a vampire-owned company. The next one says, explosives remain untraceable, and the third headline reads, tense gatherings in major intramural districts, with a picture of the Eiffel Tower. I think mostly just to remind people that this is happening in Paris, France, if the headlines in French didn't clue you into that. All the headlines just meant to set the vibe for what's going on when the story picks up. Like there's attacks all over the place, people freaking out all over the districts. I'm not sure the picture of the woman on the shelf is, but there's like a bunch of pictures of different types of haircuts, so that's probably what it is. Notice the barber cuts himself when he's testing his blade about to cut Blade's hair and freaks out a little because it is Blade, he is part vampire, so he grabs his cross just a little bit like he holds it just a little bit before he gets closer to him. Blade joking about not biting him when he gets close with the blade. That's part true. Sometimes, very rarely, he does bite, but like 99% of the time, he does not bite people. And just as he starts, a red warning light comes on, illuminating the shop as power cuts out all over the city and gunshots are fired in the street nearby. Then we basically get a Blade suit-up montage, and they actually mirror a lot of shots from the original Wesley Snipes Blade movie in this too. Part of the idea being that gangs of vampires have set loose and are going around the city because the sun has gone down and it's time for Blade to, so to speak, go to work. They haven't really said much about what the actual story is going on here beyond the pitch, like Blade in Paris, France, hunting vampires. We don't know who the main villain is going to be and whether or not there'll be any cameos from other big Marvel characters or specifically any other Marvel supernatural characters like Ghost Rider, the Sons of Midnight, anyone else. Recently, Mahershala Ali also just said their newest version of the Blade movie was looking good finally and they start filming it soon. That's supposed to be in late 2024 next year. We'll see about that. That would mean that they would release the Blade movie in 2026, which is probably when this video game is going to get released too. There have been like five different scripts and stories for the Blade movie since they originally announced it back in 2019. That's how long ago that Kevin Feige announced this movie. That's one of the differences in Mahershala Ali's Blade versus other big Marvel characters in the movies. He specifically came to Kevin Feige with a meeting discussing doing general things in the future and asked to play Blade instead of Kevin Feige going to him saying, will you play our new version of Blade? So the whole idea is that Kevin Feige at the time, this is like a couple years ago when this was happening, at the time he had no plans to actually make a Blade movie. And we were talking, he was very polite, and he was talking about what a fan he is, and then he just cut right to it and was like, Blade. And we were like, yes. That's why they've been so fine, just like pushing it off into the distance, delaying it. Like, oh, you know, we never really knew when this was going to fit into the Marvel Universe, so we'll just keep pushing it and maybe we'll figure out a good place for it. But here's the thing, they originally planned on releasing the movie a couple years ago, like a long time ago. That's why they debuted the character for the first time during that Eternals Black Knight post credit scene. Sure you're ready for that, Mr. Whitman? 
That was Mahershal Ali's voice as MCU Blade just off screen. Part of the reason why they did that, like why they put him in that Black Knight scene specifically, is because Kit Harington's Black Knight and Ebony Blade were meant to appear in the original version of the Blade movie. Now, the movie has changed a couple of times since they've changed the writers and changed the scripts. But part of the big idea here is that the Ebony Blade would be something that would have existed since the time of Camelot for hundreds and hundreds of years. Is that the Ebony Blade? Excalibur. Arthur always did have a crush on you. And because Blade has been around since the 1920s, he's come across the Ebony Blade in the previous versions of the Black Knight as he's been hunting vampires for a long, long time. So I think they intended on setting up the whole backstory that members of Dane Whitman's family who had been the Black Knight before him, going back to the time of Camelot in the MCU, had all fought supernatural creatures with the Ebony Blade, like Black Knight Vampire Hunter, but across the ages. And because part of the movie was supposed to take place in the 1920s to tell Blade's origin story, he would have come across the Black Knight of that era, which would have been, I believe, just based on the timeline, would have been Dane Whitman's great-grandfather or part of that generation in his family. They just brought another writer onto the project. Kevin Feige confirmed that it would be rated R, so breathe easy for those of you that want a rated R Blade franchise. They lowered the budget a little bit, too. It'll be like a $100 million movie, which is still a lot of money. Now, I know a ton of people are asking about Wesley Snipes coming back and cameoing as his version of Blade in, like, Deadpool 3 or Avengers 6 Secret Wars. There have been a lot of rumors about that. I do not expect him to come back in Deadpool 3 just because it sounded like his relationship with Ryan Reynolds was kind of strained because of what happened on Blade Trinity. But because that was so many years ago, that could have changed. Like, it could be water under the bridge at this point. It was a long time ago when that movie happened. That was before he even started developing a Deadpool movie. It's always possible that he comes back in Avengers 6 Secret Wars in some kind of small cameo scene, or he has a small cameo in some way as a different type of character, or like another vampire-related character in the new Blade movie too. Whatever we wind up hearing about all those characters, of course I'll do more videos. We get some more Blade footage, I'll do more Blade videos. If you have any special requests or questions about what's going on with Blade just in general, or the other supernatural characters, just write them in the comments below. There was a bunch of new Deadpool 3 footage that just dropped. Click here to watch that and click here for all my other recent Deadpool 3 videos, especially all the teasers that Ryan Reynolds has been releasing. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.